most important thing we need to do is get more people vaccinated. I call on this mob to pull back and allow the work of democracy to go forward. You've heard me say before in different contexts, the words of a president matter, no matter how good or bad that president is. At their best, the words of a president can inspire. At their worst, they can incite. Threatening the safety of duly elected officials, it's not protest, it's insurrection. I pledge this to you. I will be a president for all Americans, all Americans. And I promise you, I will fight as hard for those who did not support me as for those who did. We're going to be signing a number of ex executive orders over the next uh, several days a week. And I'm going to start today on uh, the compounding crisis of COVID, uh, COVID-19, along with the economic crisis following that and climate crisis, racial equity issues. Today we mark a truly grim, heartbreaking milestone. 500,071 dead. That's more Americans who have died in one year in this pandemic than in World War I, World War II, and the Vietnam War combined. That's more lives lost to this virus than any other nation on Earth. There is absolutely no justification, none, for looting no justification for violence. Peaceful protest, understandable. And the fact is that, you know, uh, we do know that the anger, pain, and trauma that exists in the black community in that environment is real. It's serious and it's consequential. I've concluded that it's time to end America's longest war. It's time for American troops to come home. A jury in Minnesota found former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin guilty on all counts in the murder of George Floyd last May. This can be a giant step forward in the march toward justice in America. 100 days since I took the oath of office and lifted my hand off our family Bible and inherited a nation we all did that was in crisis. The worst pandemic in a century the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression, the worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. Now, after just 100 days, I can report to the nation, America is on the move again. The Second Amendment from the day it was passed limited the type of people who could own a gun and what type of weapon you could own. You couldn't buy a cannon. If you wanted to think you need to have weapons to take on the government, you need F-15s and maybe some nuclear weapons. The point is that there's always been the ability to limit, rationally limit, the type of weapon that can be owned and who can own it. Today, I'm signing an executive order setting out a target of 50% of all passenger vehicles sold by 2030 will be electric and set in motion an all-out effort. To those who carried out this attack, as well as anyone who wishes America harm, know this, we will not forgive. We will not forget. We will hunt you down and make you pay. Last night in Kabul, the United States ended 20 years of war in Afghanistan, the longest war in American history. To me, that's the central lesson of September 11th is that at our most vulnerable, in the push and pull of all that makes us human, in the battle for the soul of America, unity is our greatest strength. Let me be clear, boosters are important, but the most important thing we need to do is get more people vaccinated. A Build Back Better world is gonna show that we can grow our economies, fight climate change, and leave a better, cleaner, more livable planet for all of our children. This law is a blue-collar blueprint to rebuild America. It leaves no one behind, and it makes, it marks an inflection point that we face as a nation. Do you have any reactions to the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict? I just heard a moment ago. Do you have any reactions to the 
I, I didn't watch the trial, so I, you know. Do you stand by your past comments waiting for him to white supremacy? Well, look, I stand by what the jury has concluded. The jury system works, and we have to abide by it. You have to get your vaccine. You have to get the shot. You have to get the, get the booster. I learned about a school shooting in Michigan. We learned, uh, well, as we learned the full details, my heart goes out to the families enduring the unimaginable grief of losing a loved one. Mark revealing that President Trump tested positive for COVID three days before your first debate. Do you think the former president put you at risk? I don't think about the former president. Mr. Thank president. you. And I intend to do whatever it takes, as long as it takes, as long as it takes to support your state, your local leaders, and as you recover and rebuild, because you will recover and you will rebuild. You know, uh, the scope and scale of this destruction is almost beyond belief. When you look around here, it's just almost beyond belief. These tornadoes devoured everything in their path. I got my booster shot as soon as they were available. And just the other day, former President Trump announced he had gotten his booster shot. It may be one of the few things he and I agree on. All the talk about how my Build Back Better plan was going to increase inflation, going to cause these debts and all the way. What happened? Goldman Sachs and others said, if we don't pass Build Back Better, we're in trouble because it's going to grow the economy. And without it, we're not going to grow.